thrilled to welcome back to Bozeman, to Montana State, a couple of Bob Bobcat greats, Travis Lube and Zach Wolf, uh, members of the Bobcat football team 2002 to 2005. Some great memories, great teams, great teammates. And uh, first of all, I'd like to start, and I'll start with you, Zach, and, and uh, maybe your thoughts on returning to Bozeman, what the city's like now, what the campus is like, the football stadium, a lot of changes since uh, you guys roamed the halls here. Yeah, there's been a, a lot of change. We've been exploring the, the town a little bit since we got in yesterday, and uh, it's been five years since my wife and I have been back and just seeing the stadium. We were just walking around with Kane when we got here. You know, these facilities look and feel the same, the Hall of Fame room. Spent a lot of time in here watching film, but seeing what's, what's changed, the, the addition to the stadium, it's pretty cool to see where it's, where it's come from where it was 18, well, 12, 18 years ago when we, when we were here. Yeah. It's been a while. Travis, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, to just echo those. Um, the Bozeman has changed a lot, and I, and I lived here for a number of years after, you know, when I graduated here, my wife and I set up home base, and I just chased football and, until I stuck in, in Vancouver uh, and, you know, have been living there since. It was, a, it was a winter, spring of 2011 when we left here permanently. We've been back a handful of times since, but every time we come back, it's just like a little snapshot into, holy cow, like Bozeman is, is changing. But, yeah, it's... it's it's really good, uh, the familiarity of walking the halls. And uh, I mean, it was literally like right there in a chair when I sat down for that first meeting with, with Coach Kramer and my parents dropped me off outside and we're like heading back to Oregon. It was like, like you know, round two of life just began in that moment, right? So uh, yeah, it's obviously a, a special place and really fun to be back. And you guys arrived in the, in the uh, fall of 2002. Yeah. The team was, uh, the program is definitely on the uptick, but the team had not had a lot of success since the 1984 team and not had a winning record since then. So I'd love to know what um, each of your thoughts and impressions were those first few weeks and months that you, when you started here at MSU as, as true freshman. Travis? Sure, yeah. I, uh, you know, I say this, I was, a, it was a bit of blissful ignorance for me coming in, right? And I like, I, I came out here and I was small town Oregon, so Montana felt at home to me. I felt really comfortable on my recruiting trip. And I got here and I was, you know, I honestly wasn't too worried about what the history was. I had seen a Montana, I'd seen Montana State play at Portland State as a recruit of Portland State's a year or two before that. And so I just had a, just kind of a cursory uh, a familiarity with what the program was and where we were at. Obviously, I, I felt good about the coaching staff and coming in, but I remember sitting uh, in the academic center uh, one of my first couple weeks here and a teammate of ours, Brent Berkland, at the time was like, oh, I got a buddy in Missoula who's giving me a bad time about the streak. And I was like, what's the streak? <laughs> and he's like, we haven't, we haven't beat Missoula since 84. I was like, holy cow, like, can we, we got to do something about that, man. And so fortunately, yeah, we were a part of, yeah, and we happened to come at a, at a really fun time in the program's history where, as you say, it was on the rise, you could feel the momentum, and then when we when we won in Missoula and, and won the conference championship uh, when we were true freshmen in 2002, uh, it just felt like the program grew up a little bit, and it felt like, you know, that was the first winning record that they'd had in a number of years, right? And so, um, you know, and then they had a streak beyond that, and the program's been relevant every ever since, and it's really it's really rewarding now to come back and see, I mean, the top 10 ranking, uh, you know, there's a lot of excitement around the program, there's an expectation of winning, and, you know, obviously there's been a few peaks and valleys along the way, but uh, it's it's come a long way, and it's fun, really fun to see. Zach, when you got here, you, this is a little bit of a cheap question for you, because you have an older brother in the program, yeah. obviously family on the coaching staff, yeah. so I, I'd be interested to know, what you thought of the program through that lens, through having <laughs> probably been over here for games yeah. occasionally. And yeah, I mean, Travis mentioned coming from a small town. I mean, I went from eight-man football in southeast Washington to showing up here and, you know, getting on the field, and it, it's a different game, different speed. And so that was, in and of itself was eye-opening. But, yeah, I grew up around, you know, for the two years before I got here, Blake was over here, and my, my folks and I would drive over a lot of times after my games on Friday night, we'd get in late, go to the game, and drive home Sunday. But you know, it was kind of for me. It was it was familiar, I guess. I'd been around campus a little bit, obviously with with Coach Kramer and all that. And so just getting the opportunity, I was kind of a late late commit to come here. And uh, so it was just it was eye opening. Um, I really didn't know what to expect. You know, I just said small town eight man football was was one thing, and you know you get here and you realize you're not the biggest guy on the field anymore. You're actually probably one of the smaller ones. Um, but man, it was an experience. It was just fun to 
you know, get to make the travel team that freshman year and, and get to travel with the team and see the, the momentum that Travis talked about and kind of get it going and, you know, and see where it is today. So your brother Blake was here. He was a tremendous player. It took him a while to find a niche, but when he settled in at tight end, he became an All-America. Yeah. And you two guys are, are similar yet unique in that way because your brother Tyler followed you to the Bobcat program. So what was it like for both of you guys to play with siblings here, Travis? Oh, for me, it was, it was really exciting. I remember for Ty, because, uh, you know, Tyler was, uh, he was a junior when I was a true freshman here. And so he was like, ah, I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to find a way to make, uh, uh, make it happen where I can play uh, a sport in college. And I think by that time he was kind of leaning towards football. And so his senior year, I remember, I remember uh, Coach Dumas wa watching his tape and Kramer watching his tape and going, I, th I think we're going to, I think we're going to recruit him. And, and, and so I kind of, I didn't want to like burst his bubble. I didn't want to like uh, ruin the surprise. Right. And so I remember, he, and you know, it's kind of a funny joke now, but I, it, I think it was Coach Du who would have, Coach Dumas at the time, who would have showed up and actually offered Tyler a scholarship. And he was like, on the spot, like, yes, I'm coming, right? Like, like, like he didn't want to go back to the house, think about it, because he'd been around the program. And he, and so for him, that was really exciting. And uh, obviously for me and my parents to have Tyler come join out here. And, you know, he, he made a little career for himself. He was, a, um, you know, the punt returner and a starting receiver. By the end of the way, I, I, I do wish we would have found a way somewhere that I could have completed him a ball in a game, but uh, we did. We threw some touchdowns at practice and stuff. And, and we lived together, you know, and, and Zach and I lived together. So, yeah, it was all kind of all in the family, but for our family, it couldn't have been better. And it's made, I mean, my brother found his wife here when she was a Montana State athlete, right? And so this place is extra special to us and, and much more so because Ty came out here. Well, I'll tell a quick story on myself. I'll, I remember walking, standing by the team bus uh, for the McNeese State game. Yep. And Tyler was down there with your folks. Yep. And I walked up to him and said, hey, how you doing? Thinking it was you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. That was, you're not the first to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Zach, what was it like to, to play with Blake? I know you had in high school, I believe. Yeah. But here on this stage, what was that like for you? It was pretty fun. You know, I guess I was able, you know, in my career, I was able to basically get to play for three years with, with Blake. Made it really easy on our parents. You know, mm -hmm. they had to come out here for those years and see both of us. Um, you know, it's, it's given us some great ammunition to, to flip each other a hard time, you know, here and there and, you know, argue maybe who played more snaps. I like to claim he was only on the field for a quarter of it. So you're welcome, Blake, for that comment. I'm sure you'll appreciate that. Um, but no, I mean, it was just a lot of fun. And, you know, the way, the way it worked out with my career, we both ended our, our collegiate career in Missoula in, in 04 because I never came back from a knee injury that next spring. So um, it was just, I think, coming from a small town, having – Having your brother here and, and even the coach Kramer it was just it was an experience I never really expected. So to have it come together it was a it was a lot of fun to look back at it and be where we are. And we even had Grant and Ryan Elliott. It's like we had we had a lot of brothers out there. Yeah, so it was all in the family. So another thing you guys share is sort of strange debut seasons. So we'll start chronologically. <laughs> Travis, coach, uh, got you in some games early as a true freshman, but mm -hmm. I don't think the expectation was ever that you were going to take the reins. But after that. Lost to Central Washington. He wanted to shake things up, and so you got to start the next week in Idaho State, which is a funky environment in and of itself. But what do you remember about that week leading up to the Idaho State game? Because I have a lot of memories specific to my job, but I'm wondering what you, uh, what was going through your mind and how the emotions were. Yeah, I, I, again, I, I, I came in and, uh, and trying to get up to speed uh, to the college football game was, and coming from small town Oregon, small college or small high school program even, uh, it was a lot. So I just, I, I just kind of had my blinders on. I was just studying my tail off at the dorms at night, just trying to learn an offense. And, you know, here I go a couple weeks later, and, and I remember Kramer saying to me one time early on, I, I came in and like, we, I think we played against Adams State really early in the year, and I played a quarter or so, and you know, did some good things, did some freshman things, and, and Kramer said, you have no idea how close you are to being my starting quarterback. And I was like, yeah, right. You know, I, like he's just, you know, Kramer was talking and he's just trying to build my confidence. So, yeah, I came into that late in that Central Washington game and, and made a few plays happen, and we obviously lost that game. It was a disappointing loss, homecoming game, and uh, Division two opponent and stuff. So I, I, I remember I found out from Mateo Toilolo, <laughs> and Mateo hardly said two words to me in my entire time here, but he told me that I was going to start at quarterback that weekend, so I didn't really believe him. I remember sitting down, it was like breakfast time, early morning classes, and he was like, yeah, no, we, coach, uh, coach put in a quarterback draw for you, and, and you're going to be the guy, and I'm going, 
I'm gonna tell you, I, like, he can't be right. They would have told me, right? <laughs> so sure enough, we come to the lunch. Uh, we used to do like a lunch quarterback meeting and, and Bales, Don Bailey broke the news to me. He's like, hey, you're up this week. And yeah, so I mean, it was a lot of emotions. It was, you know, it was, it was hard. I, I, I worked with Tyler Thomas. I knew that would have been disappointing for him, but I had a job to do and I got a lot of seniors on that team. But now I'm a freshman and I gotta, you know, I gotta, I gotta fill those shoes. So I just remember thinking, like deflecting a lot of it, thinking I just gotta play well for these guys. And I, I, gotta, I gotta be good enough. I gotta be good enough to be the starting quarterback for those guys. And I got a lot of great support from them. And you know, we had a good, really good senior class. Obviously that year was, you know, Ryan Johnson. And um, we, had a, we had a lot of good seniors. Who was the other guy that was really instrumental? And Junior Adams, uh, uh, just bringing me along and, and like kind of giving me a nod saying, hey, it's, we're going to pull for you. It's not like this is a thing where it's weird that you're playing. So, yeah, uh, we go to that I Idaho State game, and I remember I, I scrambled on one of the first series, and it was a good thing I had to drop back and scramble because it just looked like there was just a million guys on defense. <laughs> I took off running. I got a first down, and then I found uh, Aaron Hill for a long touchdown, and it was like, okay, now we're just playing football, and, and kind of just went from there. Zach, you fast forward to that McNeese playoff <laughs> game. Mateo Toilolo was a play the star and role in your debut also. Because with Nick Stevenson down, yeah. Mateo, I believe, moved over to center, and then he went down with an injury in the second quarter, if I have the details right. And you, all of a sudden, after a redshirt season where you traveled but didn't play, are yeah. plugged into the lineup in the biggest moment of the These year. These were uh, my, my nine playoff snaps of my career. Because <laughs> um, I thought, I guess I, my facts could be wrong, but I think Mateo, didn't he get hurt the week before and then also, Mateo dressed down at halftime and yes. and came out and that's uh, what it was. Mateo, it would, uh, you know, he took it back, cookie. took it back over, and um, you know, it was a shocker. Uh, I mean, you don't you don't really expect like, okay, I've spent all year, I'm not going to go in, and I know I almost snap it over your head on the so first snap the of my funny, career. So that's the funny, the funny inside between yeah. the two of us is, uh, <laughs> yeah. So like, you know, obviously we I've gone through like three centers in two weeks, and I remember. It's like, uh, we're putting Wolf in. We got to, you know, he's, he's here. I, I went over to the side and I got a couple snaps from Zach and I fumbled like two of them. And I was like, holy Lord, Zach, we're going shotgun. We're going shotgun, just throw yeah. it back to me. Yeah. I'm going to catch it, you know? And sure enough, he's like, shotgun. He shoots it up <laughs> over my head on the first play. I'm catching it like, you know, Willie Mays center field style. And yeah. uh, we made it go from there, but, uh, but yeah, that was, that was quite the unexpected debut. I'll take it though. Those were, like I said, those are the only, only playoff snaps I got, so it was. Cool yeah. experience, at least because I missed the, the next yeah. year at Northern Iowa with the injury. So That's more than a lot of guys get. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, you know, there were some really memorable games that year. That Idaho State game was um, kind of amazing. It didn't turn out right, but it was a, a, quite a contest down there. But the miracle game of all was that Sacramento State game yeah. with the uh, untimed down and the, yeah. the, the, the toss to turn quiz yeah. and face mask. What do you remember about that game? And maybe for both of you, and I'll start with you, Travis, um, some memorable moments down the stretch of that 2002 season. Oh, yeah, a couple. Um, yeah, a couple that stick out, obviously, for me. That Sacramento State game was, uh, you know, we felt like we were doing some good things on offense, but we find ourselves down late in the game. And I remember the scoreboard was behind me, so I couldn't quite tell how much time was. And I knew I just needed to get up and snap. So we get to, like, close to midfield. And so it looks like the game's over, the clock's ticking down, and I run up and I get, I get the ball off. I think half the guys thought I got it off on time. There was a couple guys celebrating on Sac State's defense, but I dropped back, I got hit, and I'm like halfway to the ground, I'm just throwing it up blind because you can't end, can't end a game with the ball in your hand, right? Ball goes right to Scott Turnquist, catches it, face mask, 15 yards, can't, can't end on a penalty, untimed down, kick a field goal, and we walk out of there winning, they were screaming mad, we were celebrating, and that kept us in the playoff hunt, as it turns out, right? We didn't really know that we were in the playoff hunt, and then again, a couple weeks later, we played a game against Portland State. Portland State had also recruited me. Um, their starting quarterback at the time was a guy by the name of Justin Wood, who was like almost a mentor of mine in high school at some of the camps. So now I'm lining up against this guy who was coaching me just one year ago, and we're beating him in a la I think it was even an overtime game. Uh, so we win that game to stay alive. And I'll never forget after that game, I had a, a Bobcat fan came up to me, and we used to do like a little fifth quarter post game thing, right? And a Bobcat fan came up to me and said, hey, uh, we don't care about the game next week. Two weeks we play Missoula. Let's take care of that one. And Bailey looked at me and was like, we want to win next week too, right? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, no coach, we're good, yeah. So we end up winning the next week and it sets up, you know, Montana lost against Eastern Washington. I remember watching it in the locker room downstairs, like, holy cow, like next week's for all the marbles. Uh, and so we can go in and, and get it done. Again, it was still quite an upset. They were the defending national champs in Missoula and they had won however many games in a row on their home, on their home turf. 
uh, and we went in and got it done. And I just remember the emotion of that moment when we, we won that football game, seeing Bobcat fans and, and the response from the town. And uh, you could just feel the energy and how much it meant to this community and this, this organization, this, the program here. Um, it was a really cool moment to be a part of. But yeah, I mean, so many things had to happen along the way to check boxes for, other, for that to happen for us. Don't get too far ahead in that Cat Grizz game because I got some questions about that. Yeah. But what, what do you remember about maybe some of the boxes to check along the way? Gosh, you know, the, a lot of it's really a blur. I think I was just trying to figure out what I was doing. You know, I was a little in over my head. I wasn't expecting to be, you know, the backup center and, you know, hadn't, hadn't played all year. And it's funny, I think, I actually don't think I dressed down for the Cat Grizz game in Missoula that year because I think it was like, hey, we're this late in the season. You know, we're, we're not going to burn your red shirt. shirt now. I think, yeah. and so I'm just sitting there thinking, like, man, I was on the sideline for that, watching that whole thing, you know, kind of unfold. And, you know, and then, like I said, McNeese State, I think, is the one that, is the one that just kind of stuck with me. And we're at first time on the field, given the stakes and everything. It just kind of, <laughs> again, yeah. didn't, I mean, it was something we, we prepared for, but I wasn't really expecting, you know, to be burning my red shirt at that point And like, okay, well, let's, let's do this, so. <laughs> well, you probably remember that day in Missoula like I do. It was beautiful and sunny and calm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Balmy. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of, you know, happy vibes in the air. Yeah, yeah. But uh, if I remember right, you know, we went into halftime up 3-0, come out to an empty stadium, yep. which is kind of the way it was back then over there, and um, after halftime, because they all stayed out in the parking lot. And so the Bobcats got the ball, got to midfield, and am I remembering right, 35 mixed, empty left? Oh, well done, Bill. Where'd you write that down? Well, I've, I've got well, well done. I've got a text from you that I've Fair got. enough. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I remembered it. Yeah. Oh, clear as day. Uh, and I remember they were, there was a blitz of formation, like they audible, they saw us in empty, they wanted to blitz. Um, and I had hot throws on both sides, I had a quick out to Blake. So Blake, I'm not sorry for not throwing that one to Blake <laughs> because I threw the slant to Junior Adams instead. And, and I remember Trey Young had blitzed off this edge and I knew he was unblocked, so I just bought a little time to my right and, and threw the pass. And you know, it was a bit of a crapshoot that day because I remember throwing the ball in warmups and as you mentioned, the balmy weather. I remember seeing like snow blizzards and you could see the, how the wind was swirling because the snow was falling and the ball was doing this on some of those throws. But that one found its mark, June caught it one-handed. and. Yeah, I remember him doing the, you know, quieting down in the end zone. Um, that was a huge moment. I think we went up 10-0 and we were able to preserve that lead. You know, I think they, they made a little scare. I, we blocked a field goal. I can't remember if it was before halftime or after, but you know, just a huge day by the defense. But yeah, that moment, that moment I'll never, I mean, that play is as vivid in, in my mind as any play in my pro career afterwards, you know, so pretty well, special. And you mentioned the guy who played a huge role that day, Ryan Johnson. Yeah. And he, he rambled for 100 and some yards, and I remember that he he did a great job helping the Bobcats keep control of that ball in the second half when the emotion was swinging back and forth. So maybe give me some thoughts about Ryan Johnson that year, playing with him as a teammate, and, and uh, when he was healthy during that senior season, boy, he was a load for defenses. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I think that was one of RJ's defining moments of his career was that that I mean, we knew we had to run the football. We, were, we, we made enough plays in the passing game that day in Missoula in 02, but just given the conditions, it was going to be a, a day where we needed to control the line of scrimmage. And so our offensive line did a phenomenal job. RJ was, I, I mean, he had like 30 carries that day, right? We, we had, and we were able to possess the football. And even though it wasn't a high scoring game, we did a pretty good job offensively that day of, of being able to maintain the football, not turn the football over under those conditions. And um, I remember, yeah, uh, just critical moments of the game. We need to, we, it's third down. We need to keep the game alive. Just <laughs> hand it to RJ again. I remember the, uh, there was a draw play or two. So we were keeping the ball on the ground late in that football game. And ultimately we got to kneel the clock out with the ball in our hands and that's, uh, that's a pretty, pretty good feeling way to win a football game is victory formation when we've possessed the football for the bulk of the fourth quarter. So fast forward to the next couple of years, and Zach, you joined the starting lineup. And, and I want to ask you both about this, but one of my favorite memories of the program then was the offensive line. And the guys you played with, especially in 03, Brent Swagger, one of my all-time favorites, uh, Joe Hurst, I think, was a starter. You played with, with and behind probably Mateo. Yeah. And, and that was such a... Um, tremendous unit to, to build this program on because it, it uh, featured a lot of leadership, a lot of uh, tough guys. And so talk about becoming part of that starting offensive line in 2003 and then kind of becoming an anchor in 2004 when a lot of guys <laughs> transitioned out and then in. 
man, it's been a while, but I remember 2003 coming back, and at that point I was just hoping to maintain the spot as the, the backup and, you know, with Nick Stevenson, and then he, when he was out, and just getting to play with Swags, Mateo, you know, Jeff Bolton, Joe Hurst, all those guys. It was just a, it was a great group, and, you know, we started off my career with Coach Damberger, and then Coach McIndoo came in, and, you know, I think that's where, you know, we really got a lot of momentum going. Our group kind of melded and, and came together. And, I mean, later on in the career, I mean, Brant Berkland moved over to the O-line from the D-line, and uh, Lawrence Figueroa joined us. And uh, it was just, it was a great group, of great group of guys. You know, we spent a lot of time together. We all had our, we all got banged up here and there. But, <laughs> you know, it was just, I remember going through spring ball in 03, and I know I, I banged up my knee, Swags was banged up, but we just, we, we got through it. And, you know, I think it just, Getting through it together as a group really pulled us together. Travis, that group had to be instrumental in helping you <clears throat> through that 2002 season, but also you were still a young quarterback in 2003. What was it, what was it like playing behind those guys? Yeah, I mean, obviously those guys are the quarterback's best friend, and they are, and it's you know, no <laughs> accident. Zach and I, we lived together. Uh, we got to town last night and saw Jeff Bolton. So there's some, some of the you know the most important relationships I made while I was here were with with those guys because you just you rely so heavily on what they're doing like a quarterback just literally can't do his job without the guys in front of him and doing what they do and so um, yeah it was it was a really good group a really selfless group and that's what you know a good offensive linemen have to be service oriented that's what they're doing they're working for their guys around them they don't get their name in the paper as often right and so it does take a really uh, really good group and I do remember a, a number of adversity and in, in naming that spring ball in 03 and we had like five offensive linemen healthy <laughs> and there was a game in 2003 where Blake played tackle. Blake Wolf who was our all-american tight end and we had to line him up at tackle Weber. at Weber State and his backup caught a six, <laughs> his backup caught a Nick Barbero caught a 60-yard touchdown that day which uh, Blake was you know he only had a half a smile about that but uh, but I mean th but that's just kind of an example of, of and, and like Zach said it, it when you got to overcome some adversity like that, it really it really makes the group tight knit. And yeah, it was. Didn't, didn't Dusty play tackle for a game? Dusty Dawes played tackle for didn't. a season, maybe half a <laughs> season. Right, and so yeah, so these guys were just hardworking overachievers that that made it go, and really were, you know, kind of the heartbeat of what we were on offense at that time. You mentioned the emotion after that 2002 win in Missoula, and none of us will ever forget that. But I, my mind kind of goes to that 2005 game here in Bozeman. And it was muddy, and mm -hmm. um, it was uh, it was just a, a slugfest. And Evan Groves, if I remember right, yep. had a great game. Yep. But uh, what I remember from that day more than anything is uh, you and Jeff Bolton embracing in the locker room after the game, ah. having gotten to the finish line together. And, and it was pretty obvious we were going to get to the playoffs. But that was a, that was a that was a great moment for me to see, and I bet that was a great moment to be involved. Oh, uh, it was um, one of my. F favorite pictures of all time that's ever been taken anywhere was me and a group of guys, um, you know, I think Grant Elliott and Jeff Bolton and Mac Mollahan and Nick Marutis and Ryan Force and just these guys that, you know, with just so many blood, sweat and tears. And yeah, it's unfortunate the playoff system wasn't set up the way it is now because I think seven and four would have gotten us in back then, um, you know, coming off some big wins late in the season. But uh, yeah, we had a strong feeling that we weren't going to get in uh, into the playoffs that next day and knew that was kind of our last moment. And uh, it was pretty emotional. I remember it, like it snuck up really quick. It was like, holy cow, this whole experience seemed like it flew by. It was a really rewarding day. It was too bad the scoreboard didn't reflect, felt like we really dominated that day. And we, we, we won by 10, but could have been more, you know, we, uh, but that's another story. But, uh, but you're right. It was a uh, really cool day. I remember I was literally limping off the field. I had sprained my ankle really badly and I wasn't coming out. And again, it was another day we were relying heavy on the run game. The field conditions were crazy because it had thawed for the first time in weeks, right? It was just a, muddy uh, muddy mess out there and again the, the Hoggies, the, the big boys up front did a phenomenal job that day of opening up holes for freshman Evan Groves to kind of be the hero of that day and but you know all of all of those games yeah you, when it comes to like uh, a moment like that at the end where <laughs> you know you know what's happening in the moment and no one really wants to know that it's the end but but we did this thing together it was pretty special. I want to ask you about one part of your game that a lot of people might not even remember nobody even then talked about but Going to St. Mary's in 2003, Coach Kramer introduced Travis Lule as his new punter, roll punt, and the idea was having you, he called it fourth down offense, having Travis Lule back there on fourth down was going to move things up for the opponents, and it did that day. That was a, a 
think, 40 to nothing win for the Cats out there in Moraga. But that was, a, that was a really interesting part of that team. And then going forward the next two years, including that 2003 U of M game here, punt to win. Yep. You punted out the game on yep. that last roll punt. But talk about your experience as a punter, maybe the – the thoughts that were going through your yeah. mind when that uh, idea was introduced to you. I love how that became a thing um, because uh, I'll never forget that Cr Kramer was, I think he was doing the special teams at the time and he had come up with this idea. He said, you punted in, you, hey kid, you punted in, uh, you punted in high school, right? I was like, yeah, I punted in high school. He's like, we're going to have you punt this week. So anyways, he puts in a package and sure enough, you know, it's an all out blitz and it was just a good special teams call because we caught St. Mary's in an all out punt pressure look and Kane and I own we had snuck him in he was the wing on uh, on the punt team and I caught it and I looked down at my feet and I just flipped it up and, and threw it to Kane Kane got tackled on the one by the way giving him a hard time but we had a big play there and so the next time out we run this package and I remember their defense was like uh oh, that's a quarterback and they're like freaking out and we ran an option play and the the ball the snap went to Joey Thomas who was the up back in this in that formation and he ran an option pitch to me and I ran for like 20 yards and so like you said, late in the game, we're, we had that game in hand, and Crims was like, just, just punt it, kid. Just stay out there and punt it. I was like, okay. You know, I thought this was a fake package, and I hit a good punt. And that right there, he's like, you're my punter. That's how we're doing it. And so that just, that was literally how it began on a whim, and I became the punter for the next three seasons, right? Um, and yeah, and had some big moments punt. I had some long punts in Bobcat Stadium there. And so, and it's funny, fast forward to when I was trying to make the team with the BC Lions, in the CFL in 2009, I was, you know, I had bounced around the NFL and NFL Europe for a couple of years, and I got there, and our head coach there said, you punted in college, right? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm a punter. He's like, we're going to need you to help us out. And my, my first snap in the CFL was as a punter, and it, was all be, it all started because of this whim that Kramer had put together in this, this room right here in special teams meeting one time. And um, so, yeah, so that's, uh, that's pretty good. And I see the roll punt. Still around. Still a pretty big deal. Still a pretty it, big deal. It was a novelty back then. Yeah, not many people were doing it. And I remember thinking, even myself, thinking this is kind of funny that we're going to do this. But we pretty much eliminated opponent returns like uh, because the ball would trickle down there and we had our cover team. And people played punt safe against us all the time. And I remember somebody told me years later that uh, there was a stat like when, when I was when I was at quarterback in the punting position on those fourth down offense plays were something like, 11 for 12 in my career passing on fourth down plays and because everyone would want to play soft and you know we'd hit some completions and some fakes. I remember hitting a fake against Oklahoma State uh, um, in 2005 opening game of the year so yeah so we had a number of, of, of plays that came to be because of that. I remember throwing a pass to Roger Cooper one time like we did all kinds of creative stuff but it did it caused havoc for defenses that wasn't a that wasn't a playoff defenses didn't like when the quarterback was still on the field on fourth down. Right. So we could talk about the football piece forever, but I'm curious to know your guys' thoughts on how the campus piece of this experience affected you and impacted you, the classroom, but also, you know, socially here and, and just the experience of going to school at Montana State and living in Bozeman. And I'll start with you, Zach. What, what was it like for you to, you know, with football aside and family aside, yeah. to be an MSU student and how's that impacted your life? MSU is great. Uh, you know, obviously you have the relationships with all the football team, but I got to know a lot of really good, you know, friends that were just, you know, Montana kids, probably shared the same background as me, rural Montana, farm ranch kid. Uh, some great friends that I still have. I'm going to go have dinner on Saturday night with after the game. And I don't know, it was just when I was getting ready to decide where I was going to go to school, I didn't want to go to Washington State, just kind of a big school. I didn't, I was going to do it, but I don't know, this just felt more like home. Uh, both Trav and I went through the College of Business and... You know, it was just like the instructors were real. Um, I remember, I think it was Coach Kramer, you know, the first day we got here, he was like, hey, in the first week you need to go, you need to sit in the front row every day and go see your, your instructors during the first week. And I was like, yeah, okay. But, like, you actually got to know some of these instructors. And I remember in years past, I'd come back and still go see them in their office, you know. So it was just, I don't know, it felt more, more my style than some large, you know, university where I'm going to have 500 kids in a, in a lecture. So... Um, and then just as Bozeman, it's, it's great to be back. You know, it's, it's funny to see how much it's changed. We lived off campus, off, uh, off Babcock, but I mean, I'm envious of the kids that are going to school here right now. It's nice. The new, new construction on campus looks amazing. It's just, it's definitely changed a lot and I'm excited to see it continue to grow. Travis? Yeah. I mean, I, <coughs> obviously this was my only college experience, but I can't imagine it having been any different. Yeah. And so much of that was was due. I had I had great professors here, and 
And I did maintain a lot of those relationships well after college uh, was done, well after I had graduated, whether it was, you know, I've had, I've had MSU professors show up at, at games in Vancouver, British Columbia, share on the Lions. And that's, so that kind of just speaks to the, some of the relationships made. And, that, and so much of, that's just life in general, right? That's some of the most important things. Um, and so I got that, I got that. And uh, I had those same experiences um, with uh, a lot of my classmates, right? I had obviously, we, we're kind of built into a social network when you're in football and Bobcat athletics and you, you meet a lot of people in the other sports teams and things like that, but, um, but, but also just um, classmates that I made, uh, um, relationships that I made outside of football, but in the, in the school of business or, you know, obviously you're taking a lot of the similar classes when you're, you know, lining up to graduate at the same time. And um, I have nothing but positive memories. I really do. I um, had professors that were always willing to work around weird football schedules. And even after I was, I had graduated here, I came back to finish my degree because I hadn't, I, cause I played as a Trua and I started chasing the pro thing right away. Um, I had to come back to finish up a few classes and I had some professors that were just, that were just awesome to me to, to be able to work with and, and, and work around my schedule and still find ways to, you know, teach me the things I needed to know to, to obtain that degree. And so I run into a lot. I, you know, live in Washington state now, um, just on the border of, of British Columbia and Washington. And I see a ton of Montana State alum out that way. And so it's, it's, it's really fun to see and everybody wears blue and gold with, with a ton of pride. It's, it, we feel like, uh, you know, we're part of a, uh, uh, of a pretty cool, uh, fraternity in, in Montana State graduates. So uh, I, I brag on Bozeman and Montana State whenever I get the chance. It's always fun watching the kids that didn't grow up around snow traverse campus. And oh, yeah. every day it's like, okay, who fell? I remember Brent Owens uh, oh. from <laughs> Georgia in front of the duck ponds. He just, yeah. I don't know, he just ate it in the middle of the road on ice. He had no idea what he was doing. It's just. I remember times we would pull up uh, on 11th there, right? Where students are walking down from class right next to the duck pond. And I would, we would post up, I would sit on the thing, we'd be like, is that person gonna slip, yes or no? And it was like a little game, and sure enough, like, you know, when it was slick out for the first time, people falling left, right, and center. So, yeah, pretty fun to watch. You, you had to learn, you know, to kind of lean forward and take baby steps, how to walk in the snow when it's slick right away. Well, that does point out something, though, that this, this school is an amazing melting pot because there are a lot of kids that aren't involved in athletics from California and from the Midwest, and, and you really do get to experience a lot of different people in this particular place. Yeah, yeah. yeah you really do. So the one, uh, the one thing I think as you get further along in your life, and you're obviously you either one of you live in Bozeman or Montana, and you come back when you can, but the one thing that even for not football players, not athletes, whatever, that connects people who are alma mater is the football program in, at most places. And so I know we've got this thing sitting behind us because we won it last year. And I, I know you guys follow the program, you, you still have connections on the coaching staff, but that's a pretty special day every, the, the Saturday before November, isn't it, when the Cats and the Grizzlies get together? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's always watch parties. I know this last year, we were just talking with Coach Choate about it, and it was coming down to the wire, and I'm, we were on the phone, actually, and I was about 30 seconds ahead on the, on the broadcast, and, and I'm biting my tongue. Not knowing he's thinking something bad just happened. Oh, we're, we're lamenting. Oh, what a great <laughs> comeback uh, with these guys. Man, it was, I'm proud of that team fighting back, but it's just not going to be our, the way we hope to finish it because it looked like Montana was about to score, right? And I'm watching it. My daughter at the time is about two and a half, and, and I'm yelling at the TV, reacting, and she's looking at me like, what's wrong? And, and then it's just, it is. It's, it's, a, it's one of those weekends that you look forward to every year. You think back to what it was like to play in those games, and... You know, it's been a long time since I put the pads on and you still get pretty excited about it. And it's just, it's a different experience. I think that it'll always be that way. Uh, and, you know, playing in the Canadian Football League uh, and making some of those relationships, obviously some pretty prominent Montana graduates and, and, two, and head coaches and Dave Dickinson and brother Craig Dickinson are both head coaches in the Canadian Football League right now. And so every time I'd get a chance, I'd be, I'd be talking with those guys before the game. We'd be talking about how the teams are doing and what, you know, where the game's at that year and how it's going to go. And so I know yeah, MSU alum Alex Singleton uh, played for Dave Dickinson uh, uh, and would place little bets with him. So it was pretty rewarding a couple years ago to see Dave Dickinson lose a, lose a bet and wearing a Montana State University Bobcats shirt. Um, 
So it's kind of a rare moment. Uh, but yeah, so it, it was cool to, I, you know, there was times I was, I remember one year I was playing a game in Montreal and I can't even remember what team it at the time, but I'm following like the game cast on the internet. I'm in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, wanting to know what's happening in Bozeman. So yeah, obviously keeping tabs on that and that day more so than any other. Before I let you go, let's get caught up on your personal lives, Zach. Talk, talk a little bit about your family, your profession. What are you, what are you up to these days? Yeah, so uh, my wife Molly and I live in Spokane. Been there for about, I moved up to Spokane in 2011. We've got two kids. Uh, my daughter Ella is three and a half. My son uh, Reed is uh, about 19 months now. Uh, I've actually worked with, worked for Northwest Farm Credit right out of college. The first job I took starting in 2007. So it's hard to believe it's 13 years since I graduated, but I've been working with them. It's a great outfit. Being a farm kid, it's kind of, you know, hand in hand with, um, with that. I didn't want to farm. Blake did. He loves it, so it works out really well. He's back on the farm, and I'm I'm still kind of doing what I'm passionate about. But yeah, it's just it's crazy how life's changed. And <clears throat> 18 years ago, we show up in Bozeman, and now you look back at how fast it's went. You sit and have these conversations. You're like, wow, this. Yeah. It doesn't seem like it's been that long, but it time's flying. Yeah. And you know, for myself, I, uh, I graduated in the fall of 06 was the last classes I took here and chased the, the professional football dream as long as I could. And I uh, um, was fortunate I, I carved out a 13 year pro playing career and I just retired this last spring. Um, and since retirement, I said, no, let's put that, uh, that college of business degree to use. So I went to work in the front office for, for the British Columbia Lions of the, uh, of the CFL, a team that I've been with uh, for 10 years as a player. This is my 11th year with the club, but now I'm on the business ops, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, division of the organization. Um, um, you know, so I, I'm, I'm in a corporate partnerships role, seeking out sponsorship revenue. I'm kind of do some brand ambassador stuff, some speaking on behalf. I do a little bit of broadcast work, um, given my, you know, playing career. I, uh, do some radio, some television in Canada. Um, so that's that's kind of my role. My wife and I have, we mentioned we got married in summer of 2007 and Bozeman was home base for the next four or five years while I was chasing football. Um, we have three daughters. I have an almost seven-year-old, a five-year-old, and a three-year-old. So we're first grade, kindergarten, preschool. Uh, life is busy, uh, but family is happy and healthy. And uh, that's where life has taken us. I know the girls are getting old enough now, and they've been to Bozeman a, a couple of times, my oldest too. Um, but, you know, we're just this is a quick weekend getaway, so my wife and I are here, and they're going, oh, we want to come back to Montana. I say, I know, we're going to make... So we'll, we'll try to take them back in the spring, and, uh, you know, because they love exploring and adventuring, and, and now they're old enough to kind of recognize this is where mom, you know, mom and dad spend, uh, spend a lot of time in this place. Well, it's, it's a thrill for me to catch up with you guys. Great conversation, great old friendships, and and I'm, I don't like speaking for other people, but I'll, I'll do it. I'll say on behalf of uh, Bobcats Everywhere, thanks to you guys for your great work here, for being such great ambassadors for this school, this town, and, and uh, thanks for coming back. Oh, thanks Pleasure for having us. Yeah. For MCBobcats.com, I'm Bill Lambert. Go Cats.